Hello everyone, Imanuel here. Welcome back to the Midmat from Scratch series. This is part 5. We are almost reaching the end, but don't worry, I have some stuff planned for the future. Arthur will be helping me out in the chat, so feel free to ask questions. Again, if I'm going too slow or too fast, please let me know in the in the chat. And if you want me to go in detail at some point, also let me know. Today's stream I think will be around one and a half hours. And before we start, let's do a quick recap of what we, we have done so far. So far, what we have worked on is mainly to create all the, all the ceramic parts, mid-mat. Then all the blue, I also showed you how I created the the blue parts, the blue paint inside uh, uh, that is over the ceramic. How with a uh, substance designer filter, we were able to mimic the effect of how the paint overlays in, over the ceramic. After that, we also checked how the clay that is in the inside head was made parts we play with the roughness and with the, the height maps and the colors to create the variation and last week we also checked how to do the these green green jade rocks that are part of the base for for today what I th I'm thinking on mainly show you guys how I, I did Okay, how I did this all details, all this part. Then also I want to show you how I created some of the details of the base wood. Is basically a, a, a substance source material and the glass and if we have enough time I also will talk about a little, a little bit about the tablecloth or table runner that that is here when it was created in designer so we may go into designer as well at some point of this trip depends on how how fast we move on Junius hey hello Nice to see you back here. So now that we know the, the plan for today, let's start. So this is mid mat, at, at least what we have done so far. And now right now I'm in the body texture texture set in here. And we're going to start with the hole. So to create the hole, for example, we can do it by first create a folder, call it holes. Actually, no, we, we don't need the folder. Actually, we can create a simple fill layer and call it hole. We don't want the the color we know that the, the color will, will be full black metal for the metal part we don't care about it now the roughness we want it to be full white in this case one the normal we don't care and the height will make it all the way to minus one now we have a black mask and as always to keep everything procedural we add a paint layer Okay, now the easier way to create the hole is first with that setup. First, we need to create if we check up how the hole is structured, we have first these big shapes with angles you can see here. Some, some curvatures, but also, but it always ends in a point thing here. 
that that's the first part the shape right second part of the shape holes are these lines and these lines always come around they are not perfectly straight and always come around in some of the angles parts creating mainly what i want to create are these kind of shapes you can see here if we simplify the shape we are looking something similar like this. The, the second layer of detail of the holes okay and finally after that we have a third well actually we have, we have two, two things two extra things the third part will be the, the third layer of detail there are some smaller holes some parts as you can see here that's the, ter the third level of detail and the fourth level of detail are the secondary lines that you can see here move this a little bit up another one oh. Oh, secondary lines one is next no we don't care okay but what so we have in the end four layers of detail the big block shapes that define the base of the hole the second the secondary lines that define the different plates of how the crack is being created let me see if i can a little bit more clearly second so first we have main shapes you can see here the important thing of the main shapes is we have a lot of angles we can have some curvature curved parts like this we can pointy pointy stuff that will be the, the first color second layer will be the main block lines you can see here the red ones third one make them with blue as are these smaller secondary holes that we can see here one and the final layer of detail yellow are the secondary lines you can see here secondary lines that are not part of the crack zone that are created directly by the by the hole but are there spreading over the shape those are those were the details that I mainly found useful when describing up the cracks in the in ceramic. We're going to try to replicate. Them. So first we have a paint layer, and we are going to cover this one. Large. Okay, and this one we can be, well, can be a little bit loose. We want mainly are these. Our shape. Okay, around a little bit. And some is okay. It looks. I think this is too a little bit too round, so let me brush. I think I'm like where is where is look. It's a little bit too round as well. More pointy pointy. Well. Okay. 
here let's make it a little bit more interesting as well because the pair the part is too large see Okay, take the mask. Okay, it looks fine for now. That will be the large details. But now we can see that we are having some tessellation issues. So the way to fix it will be here by adding a filter. And we're going to add or but this is strong we need small this okay and now we want to add secondary The paint layer, I'm going to call that one mid. And this one will be will have the small lines that will that will open from the crack. This one, what we want. Let me reduce the size of the brush. We want something like this. We don't need to be too straight on them, but we don't want them to be also too too thick. And what we, what we are looking for are these square shapes you can see here. For example, here it doesn't make sense to add one here, and add one here. And maybe here. Now we can leave that with us. That here. Okay. Now we have the crack. the third lines we can now add another paint layer all all holes and this one is again we create reduce the size of the room. and this one is to create this very hole like here at the end At the middle, you don't need to add it everywhere, just at some point. Hey, Atom Studios, nice to see you here. And then we have as a last layer, very lines again, and this one. Be like this, for example. I can continue the oh, this. Is. And branch them a little bit. And finally, we add a filter, and we and for this filter, we use the blur slope. 
Now it seems a little bit too crazy. First, we need to change from blur to min. But better. And we can reduce some play or play with intensity. Need, we want this to break it all. Maybe this is a little bit too much. One. Two. Maybe, maybe that's better. And sometimes, as you can see here, it might look better thinner the line is. Maybe these lines are a little bit too thick. Basically, depends on the distance. Sometimes you want it to be a little bit larger. Because you want it to be noticeable, even if your shape is a little bit... You can see here. Here are the cracks. The cracks look fine. Again, we follow the different different patterns that we talked about that was shapes that are pointy shapes of hole then the secondary shape that are the lines create blocks here meaning I talk about these parts secondary holes that are the small details here of the parts and extra lines just to make it branch a little you can see here and with that we have the hole the only disadvantage of this technique that I found is that when the light hits directly in a ray you can actually see the hole the, the black part on the hole a little, with a little bit white color that breaks completely the illusion of the hole if you use uh, some sort of indirect light like here for example we can increase the exposure of the environment to one to increase the overall light we avoid give, giving some direct reflections here it sells a lot better the idea this is an issue here exact in iRay but it's not an, so, so much of an issue in other renderers because in other renderers you can define or add a mask some sort to avoid receiving the indirect lighting or even direct lighting that and that will sell a lot better the full dark, dark hole effect and you can do it in Maya, in Blender, in almost every, every render can, can handle that Array in this case cannot so here for example what I did the array render for midmat was mainly played with the, the position of the hole and the position of the light that was mainly mainly the way I, I handled it as you can see here with the light is way reflecting in this part and with the hole in this part you didn't really see this whitish color that we get here in the if we set the light it directly on the hole okay you could also use maybe opacity map to make an actual hole like that for example here if we add a channel channel and this mask we include the opacity set zero and we need to change the shape I think here we change it to use the alpha blending shader and have the hole in this case what it looks like Jose Carlos hi let's see you here and here as you can see effect works a lot better the only issue is because the uh, substance painter shaders that were that are by default 
don't have a two-sided two materials so in that case if I did this part let me show you what happens if I did this part for here and now in color something random for example this field layer color let's red the color mask for example if paint this here you can see it through the other side that doesn't make too much sense when we're talking about ceramic if there was a way to to add a two two different materials on the inside and on the outside i will have used this technique when on the mid mat i think it will have looked a lot better than just doing the doing the dark and the display the height minus one plus all black Anyway, that's how I did the hole, and that, that's how usually you do. You can do some holes in ceramic. On this one specifically, I think the lines. Maybe I did the lines too too thick. If we add the different layers. In this one, this part was fine. These lines, I think they are too thick. We will have done it smaller. The holes are also fine. You can see the blur slope completely. Completely fix it if you look it from afar, but if you do a close up, compare it to the ones that I did in the project, ones are a lot thinner and sell the effect a lot better. But that's the same technique. Okay, now that's the first part that, that is adding the holes. Now let's see how it is. Let's start with the base. Okay. actually I want that the base we have a lot of materials first we have first we have the wood you can see here then we have the rocks that we did last week then we have a bit of metal here then we have glass and the glass is divided into parts transparent part that is on the top and the, the rim of the glass that is the, this green green like part here and also we have these pieces of ceramic and the piece of clay and the tablecloth and dust right so today what we're going to look first the wood is that's pretty pretty straightforward. Then we're going to look how I did the glass, both the part of the top and the parts of the second, and the third will be the rim because they're different materials. The jade all, already you already did that. Maybe maybe you will just add it. But it's really pretty pretty straightforward if you follow the, the series the past chapter of the series. And the, the last thing that we are going to do will be the last thing that we're going to do will be the tablecloth and what mainly that is an alpha that I use inside of designer but we're going to learn in this or inside of painter that I made in designer and we're going to we're going to make it in designer okay started with the base Change the texture set and you can hide everything. Okay. Now for the wood, I basically just use a old wood material. I think. Let me see if I can see here. opening launcher I 
thing was called Uh, it's, it was this one. The, now I send it to Painter from here. And now here it is. Basically, just drag it. Set the projection to the planner. I really don't care about the. Sorry about that. Seems like when I launched the the launcher, Substance Planner was late in the middle of the speed. Substance. Okay. I don't I don't care about the height. I only want this because I want it to be polished. Not too rough. And then we can scale it a little bit, maybe some. And and maybe make it a little bit darker, like this. Okay, now that will be all for the wood. Let's move. Let's create a folder and call it wood. Keep everything clean. Then. Next part will be the rim, the glass. Create a folder, we call it glass. And create a second folder, add it to the glass, call it glass rim. Now here we do need to have to do some extra stuff. Let's begin with the height. So, create the height map, uh, height folder. It's always set the color to blue to give everything easily, uh, the, so we can find it easily. And here, basically, what I need is a fill layer that only affects the height. Okay, glass rim, I need to add a black mask. This. And the. This. Okay, so let me select the color just to make it to select. What I want to select is this part. Here. And let me see, I think you can do it with symmetry. Make it faster. The rim of the glass. Any questions so far? I see Carlos is here, Dunias from Studios, and Jose also. It's nice to see again some familiar faces. Atom Studio says that the screen trailer was awesome. Yeah, I really like it too. I played both previous Assassin's Creed, the Origins, and I think I, I I played most of the series. I only stopped playing. I didn't play, for example, the the one in London. I think there was one. Um. I think that was that was main, the main one that that I didn't I don't remember. 
Arthur says, Painter needs a loop selector. Definitely. I, I asked the developers about the loop selection. And the answer was, it's it's really difficult because we triangulate everything. So once it's triangulated, it's not that easy to do some loop selections. But with the new export that you can keep the geometry not triangulated, okay, here we need the mood symmetry. We're doing crazy stuff. With a new way to export without the triangulation, maybe that will be a, a new feature. Also, I've been uh, I've been talking about the new features of Painter with some of the developers. Finally, they they released the Python APIs that will make it easier for me to keep up the plugins updated and make them all work the same or at least more similar mainly between designer and painter I have some ideas for some plugins for that apart from my live link probably I'll be announcing those soon the, I think the, the most innovative thing that I found recently substance was the first the anoragami that was the automatic UVs. I mean, I prefer to use Prism and create my UVs by hand because in the end you can get a lot of a very result with that. You, maybe it's for some small small pieces that you you don't really care about too much about the topology. You can do it. You can do it in ZBrush and then uh, quickly see remesh and then the auto UVs from Substance. To make an asset quickly, or if you want to iterate quickly with a sculptor from Seabridge or something like that, that's a great scenario for these auto UVs. Otherwise, I still prefer to make them prefer to make the UVs on reason. I think we're not doing it too slow. The stamps, the new stamps, the new way to put the, the decals. I like that a lot. Reminds me a little bit of Blender's decal machine. I don't know if, if you guys, which which uh, 3D applications did you, did you use, or you only texturing painter? Do you use Blender Maya? I've lately been using Blender a lot more. I mainly use Modo for modeling, but I don't mind using other softwares. Maya was the first I used when I when I learned 3D. Lately, I've been using a lot more Modo, mainly because it's a lot easier to to model. There, I also use Houdini for some procedural stuff, mainly when I'm working on large environments. And what else I use? You know, for the uh, I I only use for the plugin. I re I really don't like it that much for for modeling. 3ds Max also I don't like it mo too much for modeling. But what I like this of 3ds Max is the implementation of Corona Render. It's a really really great render. Also, be ready because in 3ds Max what I found is that V-Ray, usually the updates for V-Ray arrive first at, at 3ds Max. So for rendering, maybe 3ds Max is a good option. For modeling, I prefer Modo. Sculpting, I'm just starting. Really not that, not that good with sculpting in ZBrush. But I'm also looking on Blender because with some of with some of the add-ons that people are making, it's really becoming a very stable and strong application. Mainly since the release of 2.80. I think 2.79 was still a little bit a lot like a, t a beta application rather than a finished product. 
think I'm almost done. Also, guys, please, I, I have some more videos coming from the Know Your Know series if anyone is interested in designer. I have an idea for a tutorial on Painter of texturing another asset, but different asset and a little the, with a workflow that is a little bit different from this one. I think you guys might find it interesting. And also I have a couple of videos on the bake that are waiting for some some just finish in final details, the edition part are related to rendering. So if you if you have anything that you're interested on, please let me know and I'll try to make a a video. Or if you need for if you're interested for example in a custom designer 101 tutorial or for example I think uh, someone requested a, a metal integration of a metal material in designer or um, in in one of the in one of the streams so maybe that that will become a tutorial I also received some comments about some specific notes in designer explain them I also try making those as well so the easier way for me to to know what you can want to see in the channel is to is for you to comment or give me some information about it. almost done I'm trying to be fast and also not too sloppy. I know that watching me select some Conquest is not that exciting. I think uh, we're almost done. Tina says, I would love some recent beginner tutorials. Yes, I also have some some ideas of how to make tutorials I've seen some people do streams or they use Reason but I think that it will be easier to have like a glossary of tools for Reason so I'm planning on making some quick tutorials on specific parts specific tools and how to use them that way you, if you want something that like a full Reason from scratch Example, there are some uh, if you want something a quick reference get information you also you also be able to find something like that YouTube this one I think we're done. Okay. 
that will be the mask for the glass ring. Now we can continue the texture. One thing that we need uh, is also to add here an emissive, emissive channel to sell better the glass. Let me add it just quickly. Here we were talking about the height on the glass rim. For the height, um, what we need is so we, we can add a black mask and we can here add a fill layer and search for maybe some other twine or, or something like that what I what I'm looking for is a lot of small points might be a little large so maybe let make it a little smaller like 12 better and the effect of the height is too much let me reduce it maybe something like 0.1 Maybe it's a little bit low. One. I think that's better. Now we remember change, it changed the color because we had the color, but we don't want that. Where so move it. And that will be all for the height. Now let's do the roughness. So we need another folder. We add an, a fill layer. This fill layer will only affect the roughness. Let the roughness fight. Now we're starting to see the, the glass. We need to still to fix the color, but it's looking a little bit better. Now, the only issue is that this roughness is a little bit too clear, clean. So, let's call this one base. Let's add another fill layer. Call it noise. Again, this one will only affect the roughness. We have a black mask. And we can use another fill layer and let's try again the all 12 roughness channel okay something like this not too bad be more white and increase the contrast That way we can have some dirt on it, but also see the some highlights. Okay, so now we have the roughness. Move it to the roughness folder, and as always, the color of the folder of the rock. And finally, what I want to do, or with the color. So we create another folder, color, and will be red. The layer, color. Now for that, 
we're look what we're looking for activating this color and we're looking for a dark green something like this and but now that I'm looking at it I think maybe the height noise is a little bit too large exactly. let's reduce it to I think that's better Okay, let's call this base green, dark green as base on the color, and then let's duplicate the layer, call it noise, and in this case, what I want something that is a little brighter. Maybe something like, but I knew to add a black mask let's add a uh, layer as always in this case the type of noise that we are looking for are lines so maybe a directional noise will be better one I think if in the directional noise too has a little bit more contrast but will be so Make it planner. Okay, so good. Let me see problem. We need something. Went a little bit more. It feels a little bit too dirty at the moment. Now, back to the directional noise. Thing with the balance. a little bit more darker tones, contrast but I think maybe the scale is too Something I think looks better. Yeah, something, something like that. Now, let's. Let's fix the, the top part because the top part at the moment seems a little bit too too flat. So let's create another folder, call it last top. And again, we need first to create a black mask. I'm also going to add a layer to see easily. We're doing color white. Collection, and it will be easier to do in the parts.
any questions so far right now is a good time to answer them since i'm just creating a mask let me know in the chat okay this one I think it's easier if I first okay. Also, I would like to know, maybe you want to comment on, on the chat or in the actual comments of the video once loaded to YouTube. For example, you use another painting tool, like Mari Mixer from Pixel. Maybe even, I think it's called Armory, Armor Paint, one that is open source. Lately, I've been using a lot more Mari, mainly because at the moment you can you you can paint across buildings. That hopefully that functionality will arrive soon. Painter. Because I have a couple of projects that I would love to do in Painter, but I really need to paint across buildings. Actually, Carlos is saying, actually, I'm thinking to switch to Pixel Mixer so we can paint in three. Yeah, I want to try it. I, I tried one of the early releases they had, but that it was really limited. I've seen a couple of of the streams from the Quixel guys. And, and they are showing the, the new features. I think Painter is miles ahead of of Quixel in a lot of things. And maybe at some point it seems like The way of working is really similar to Painter, so using both apps won't wouldn't be so so much of a it wouldn't, wouldn't be too difficult really. Since the logic of masking and mixing materials is basically the same. I didn't know, but uh, a friend told me that you know that in Pixel Mixer they are calling the materials smart materials. And I was like, well that's like a painter thing, right? The smart materials. But no, I didn't know that the original smart materials were from the quick the Quixel mixer predecessor that was called NBO, I think. Yeah, they, they have all the right to call call their the materials smart materials. Mari is a is old school. There's a free non-commercial version if you want to check it out and learn it i what i what i'm liking a lot about mari right now is the fact that instead of layers you have nodes it's more similar to designer and also more powerful mainly, mainly because you can you can understand and reuse the mask a lot better than, than the equivalent equivalent part that you will do in painter with anchor point because the nodes you can really connect them really easily. 
it doesn't matter in which part of the graph they are unlike with layers that you need to add it at the bottom in order to be able to use it at the top stuff like that in the graphs don't, does, the node graph doesn't care about that that's quite a, that's one of the reasons I'm liking Mario a lot right now the only well the big issue is that compared to the other tools I think Mixer is free sample painter is around $150 per year I think and Mari I think it's like $600 per year yeah the, the disadvantage of Mari is that it's really really expensive anyway if you, if you like Quixel more than painter Carlos let me know this I haven't used it that much but I'm really interested in hearing what people think well even there are some crazy guys that, that are painting on blender directly I'm not sure if I I would like that I know that painter that blender can do a lot of things but sometimes a specialized software is a lot better yeah Adobe is not, not everyone is fan of subscriptions but for, for example from what I've seen from the Adobe people I've worked in a couple of projects with the Houston's team and with, uh, and with some people from Adobe and what I've seen first is that the painter the painter team philosophy remains they are Sebastian really is keeping the the idea of 3D inside Adobe relevant because I think they Adobe tried a couple of years ago also to to get in, involved in the 3D business they really did just abandon it and didn't do too much but now with the acquisition of Substance last year or a couple of years ago I don't remember exactly I think it was last year they yes the finally Adobe is taking 3D seriously on one side yeah it's done and um, and the development and resources for this of the substance team has really increased so there that's the benefit the the short end of the stick is really is as you said that they force on the substance team the The subscription model and not everyone is is okay with that i don't mind it that much subscription model if for example yeah, i see an issue um i don't mind it if it's not that expensive and and the improvements are are continuous but if if there are no major improvements and you still need to pay subscriptions and see if, if that makes sense at least for for me good thing that there are alternatives because you have alternatives for photoshop for all the three applications with blender for example procreate i use a lot of procreate right now that's also good okay let's see now we're if you see here we're having an issue I don't know if you can see it in yeah I think you can see it in the here I'm going to close up a little bit and the issue is and that was the issue that was making me don't like a lot the rim of the glass as well I think as you can see in the white part even if we have a mask we have the details of the wood and we don't we don't want that right for example if I hide the, the wood they'll disappear and for example in the rim let me increase the make it a little bit rough 
the roughness is the reflections are, are are looking okay but then something will happen because we have again the details of the wood and we want to fix that the easiest way to fix that is first you go to the folder in this case the glass folder we change to normal and instead of nmdt that will be normal map detail we set it to replace and with that we immediately replace it everywhere so now even if we have the the wood the details of the wood remain for example here in this color I remove the color We can see the details of the wood in the wood, but in the in the glass and the top that is white, we no longer see it. Now, usually when you do this, one thing that you want to do is add a fill layer at the bottom of the folder that is completely flat. Mm, all right, okay, I see what, what the issue, what's the issue. The masks I have are, are at these levels, right? So maybe okay, let me let me go back. Here in the normal, let's change it again to normal detail. Sorry, normal detail. And for example, we have this layer that we have everything set up by default. We add it to the glass at the bottom in the normal. We click replace right now the effect is working working here this is not doing what I'm expecting to, it to do Clean. here we want it to replace Okay, yeah, that's that's what's happening. So we have. Let me set the like this. So very simple. What I have here are the the three the three parts that we have worked so far. At the bottom, the wood, and the glass rim. And then the glass top. And the issue that I'm that I'm having is that if we check the normal map, the normal view, this add a layer and let's and the rock set it to work. There you go. Now you can see the normal map, right? The normal information. And the issue that I'm having is that when I add the top information, in this case, what I'm adding is a, you remember that we have here a fill layer that is painting the color to white. We still have the normal from the, from the wood in the white part. You can see here now for example here I include the normal even if I include the normal the information of the wood is here what I need to do in these scenarios is like what I did here in the in the glass rim go back to the glossy black to see the, the effect as you can see the normal is also appearing in the lights for example, if I had everything I have here, if I change from normal map detail, if, if I have normal map detail, we we will have the exact same normal map that we have in the in the wood. But if I if I change it to replace, now we have a flat normal map. 
usually that same that same issue happens with height maps. So usually you want to also change linear dodge to replace. That way everything that you have on this folder will override while the what what is on the folder below if you are combining different types of maps. If we do the same here on the glass top, change this one to replace, and then go to the normal, change it again to replace. The normal doesn't disappear like it did in the in the trim as you can see. Because if we want it to disappear, we need to enable the normal map and height the base for example. We write the information that is below. We don't have anything here. It won't rewrite anything. And now we have the effect that we want. We and now if we enable details on the the edge of the glass rim, we can now see that we have two different normal normal information. The dirt we added here. And the wood in the wood part. But now it's not longer, we are no longer having the dirt plus the wood in the rim. And we are no longer seeing the wood details on the top. Okay. So with that solved, let's get back to the material. So now that we have this on the base, also another thing that we want is that the roughness the glass will be extremely shiny so we said the roughness was almost zero something like this okay and that said We can add some noise variation for this kind of noise variation on the on the roughness. The surface will be really really glossy, so we don't need to do that that much at the moment. We can, for example, add a folder, call it rough. Now rough, as you can see here, is green. Set it to green again, and here we have a fill layer. We can set this to, for example, only affecting the rough and zero, completely zero. We have a black mask and a fill. And in this fill, what we're going to add right now, the fractals. Maybe the fractal sum too because it has a lot more contrast and than a projection. See how it's affecting roughness. Here you go. And here with the fractal sum. We can maybe increase a little bit the contrast to make it more noticeable. The balance. We check the mask. This is what we have. Now we see here. Let's set for, for the color out of the roughness map. Now let's see. I think it's in a little bit too hard. Effect. Okay, here you can see it. You can see it in this. How the reflection is working. Ok, 
okay, this is what we are looking for. Continue. The final element to sell this glass is to copy, we can copy this layer, initial layer that we created, create here new folder, it red because color, and we paste the wood. In this case, we only want the color, and you can see immediately that we have a nice glass effect. If we want to exaggerate it a little bit, we can add a, to the layer a filter, only affect the color. HSL and we can play with the saturation a little bit 0.52 lightness okay maybe even a little bit and that will look like a glass which is not that easy to do in in painter actually because we are faking some sort of transmission we check the check the night ray let's see how it looks There you go. Now, the final thing that I want to add to the glass is um, I think that to fake a little bit more this transmission effect, we need to add some lights on the rim. Remember, if when you when you look the edge of a of a glass, how it looks, you have a main some some dark parts some some lighter parts and some one some other parts are even more lighter so to do that i'm going to create a new folder and i'm going to call it emissive in this case then i create a new fill layer here in this fill layer we only want to fake the emissive channel we put it all the way to white we get this result and it's not that we want right now so what we're going to do first set the color we need to set a something like this um, white uh, a little bit the saturated green maybe we can saturate it a little bit more let's try with this one again we have a black mask and what we have one here Add a fill and let's add again a directional. Click random to have a different one. Let's here we set it to planner a little bit too small, so let's include increase it a bit to nine. And we want the detail to be really, really something like this. And do something that looks better something like that and we can always if we want it to be a lot brighter we can decide to and can also 
Get some shader values. Five. Easy vintage gear. That's too much. And now here it's variation. And with that, go to the render again. Uh, today the the machine is a little bit too slow. Anyway, as you can see, these emissive highlights help a lot to sell the, the idea of the of the glass. See in this part. Okay. You can see in these parts here, it helps a lot. Okay, um, I think we're around, but we only have like 10 minutes left to stream today. So, the other thing that I wanted to show you, I think I, I'm going to move it to the next. The next stream and probably the final the next one will be the final one and what we're going to talk about in the next one will be how to make these shapes and how to make this one we do them in designer as alphas and in painter we just add them to create the effect anyway any questions so far Let me know if you have any questions so far. I know there's a little bit in the in the stream, so I'm going to give you some time to answer. No questions, guys. Well, in the meantime, to give you time to, to write a question, if you have one, let's recap what we did. So basically, what we did today was to learn how to create this, the cracked, the cracked parts on the ceramic. We added the, mat the base material on the on mid mat with a wood. Then created the rim material for the glass and finally created the top material for the glass. Adding a little bit of roughness and I'm playing a little bit with the missip and the reflections on the, the shader. So it was a it was a little slow mainly because I had to select a lot of stuff, but I hope that the next one and final will be a little bit faster. It will be in designer mostly. And after that I have a couple of other projects that I want to talk to show you guys. Different kind of materials and different techniques. Some, some a little bit more more realistic and based a lot more on reference. So anyway. Anyway. Uh, the first of all thanks everyone for being here thanks everyone for being here i am thinking of making files available on patreon at some point not only the files of the stream but also the files of my my project so let me know if you are interested Carlos de la Rosa asks, are you going to share other praise? Yeah. Yes, I have a couple of praise that I want to share. Some are modeling, some are 
texturing, some are maybe some rendering as well or, or rigging. But I know I need to know what you guys want. So please, if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. And so in general, if you have any questions, feedback, idea for a tutorial, let me know. Okay, guys, I think that's all for now. And see you, see you the next time. Thanks for being here. Bye.